Hey there everyone, this is just a quick tutorial, updated tutorial for Moonwork 3 in the graveyard. Um, the new stuff is a new heat limit that's much faster and allows you to um, get shoes and sticks in the grotto for a faster Majora fight. Um, and that heat limit works on every version of the game that's Japanese. So JP 1.0 and JP 1, it'll work on both. Um, it's going to work on Wii, it'll work on N64, just any, anything that's based on 1.0, 1.1, it'll work on. And then the second thing I wanted to show is a new exposition setup for the style reference that will work on N64. It's a bit slower than the one for Wii, but you can't use the one for Wii because you can't walk in a straight line on N64. Um, so anyway, I'm going to show those two things, but first, it'll be helpful to get some watches up. So, I need to add a few watches. Um, the first one I care about is Exposition of Link. Um, the next one I care about is Link's Angle. Um, the next one I care about is going to be the Held Actor Pointer of Link. And what's the Held Actor Pointer? Well, that's the address of the thing that Link is carrying. Um, and the reason this is important is because based on which heat if you do and which version you're on, um, things are going to allocate at different addresses. Um, and um, so I can't just give you what the watch value is for every version of the game for every heat minute. It's just not possible because um, there's infinitely more. So I'm going to show you how to calculate it yourself based on the held actor corner, which will vary based on the heat minute and the version you're coming in. And then the last thing we want is the entrance index that we're writing. Um, whoops. So I'm just going to call this entrance. Um, and this is going to vary as well based on the the, the version that's the address that we're So anyway, I've got my four labels out now, so I need to figure out what addresses to use. How do I figure this out? Well, conveniently enough, I have all this information for you up on ZSR. I've been working very hard to put this all up there. So, I'm going to switch over my machine view here. Now, if we go over to here, let me just start from the beginning. ZeldaSpeedruns.com slash LM. That will bring you to ZSR. And you click this scale reference manipulation tab and then click SRM Pointer. Um, and then here you can scroll down and you can see the address of Link. Uh, why do we care about the address of Link? Well, it's because Link's address is going to be the base for these first three addresses. Um, so uh, I'm playing on JP 1.0. Um, so Link's address is 3FFFA0. For 1.1, it would be you know the next thing done on that table, 400260. But since this is 1.0, I'm going to do the 1.0 version. Um, so 3FFFA0. Oops, A is faster to go this way. Cool, and I'm gonna I'm just gonna put this address in for all three of these right now, and then we're gonna change it later. I'm not gonna do the last one because that's the one that's heat dependent. So we'll save that one for later. Okay, so that's that's a good starting point. So okay, next. Uh, here, let me just show you what I did, actually, because I wasn't on N64. So that's what I did. I put in a 803FFA0 for all three of those watches. Um, and then I'm going to change them in just a sec here. So let's go back to ZSR. So how do I know what the X position is? If I click Fields Modify, this link, it'll bring you to a nice table that shows X position, which is something you need, and also face and angle, which is something that you need. Um, so for X position, it's offset 0x24, and it's 32 bits. So let's go back to the N64 here. So for X position, it's, well, it's 0x24, so how do we get that? Um, 
If you can't do hex math in your head, that's totally fine. It's very tricky because it has letters as well um, instead of just numbers. So what you can do instead is just count how many times you hit D-pad up. Um, so I want to hit D-pad up four times, one, two, three, four, in this column. And then I want to hit it two times in the second column from the right, so one, two. So that'll give X position. And then how big is X position? Is it eight? No, uh, that table shows up as 32 bits. So I'm going to view this as X decimal. That's what the X means. And then let's go ahead and move that over here so that it's easier to see. Awesome. So that's X position. Great. Um, and so let's compare with CSR really quickly. So uh, X32 and CSR says 32 bits. So that's perfect. Okay, next is face and angle. That's offset 0 at DE. Um, so let's go, and it's 16 bit. So let's go ahead and input that. So how are we going to compute 0 at DE? Well, we're just going to count again, like last time. So um, we're going to count E presses, although I will tell you that 0 plus E is just E. That's an easy one to remember. Um, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. What do we do once we get to 9? Well, we start using the letters. So A, B, C, D, E. Perfect. Okay, now we need to add B to this column. So let's go ahead and do that. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. A, B. Okay, and then since I went over... I, I like I have a carry now because I, I, like, I, I scrolled past F back down to 0. So I need to carry that through. It's just like doing carries in addition. Um, I'm just going to carry the one all the way over. And now we have 804005E, and it was 16 bits. So I'm going to view it as hex again, because hex is just really convenient. And that's length angle. Currently it's 8,000 in hex. Great. OK, so what about the held actor for me? Well, let's go over to ZSR. And currently, the best place I have this is on the DecuGuard SRM page. Um, the hack and links held active pointer link plus 0 of 388. OK, so 388, that's easy enough to remember. Let's go back to the N64 here. And we're going to go ahead and um, put that in. So again, we're just going to do the same method, so 8. For that column and then eight for this column one two three four five six seven eight except we have a carry because we went from f to zero so whoops i hit the wrong thing um so so we're just going to tap up one on every single one of these so it was three fff so i'm just going to tap up left up left up left up to do the carry until I finally get something that doesn't have a carry. So there's no going from F to zero. Um, okay, so that's part of it. And then the last thing is this digit needed to have three added to it. So one, two, three, boom. And this is a pointer. Pointers are always 32 bits. So I'm just gonna go ahead and um, make that X32. Great. Okay, this last one, entrance, we don't know what this is yet until we've done the heat unit, because it's dependent on the heat unit, and it's dependent on the version of the game, whether it's um, 1.0, 1 1.1, English, um, GameCube, like those will all be different. Um, so, let's go ahead and do this heat unit. So the first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to get over to the grotto back here. I'm having trouble back walking because it's in 64. Uh, so go ahead, pull a bomb, and get about there. Blow up this grotto, fall in. Um, in Defeat Majora, you're going to want to get stick and choose. So stick. And choose. And then you're going to want to leap. You might want to equip stick and choose as well. You can do it whenever, though. 
Okay, so after getting the bombs and trees from the grotto, um, we're going to go back to the room with the graves. And we need to allocate smoke, which means we're going to drop a bomb, wait for it to blow up, then smoke will appear. And then we're going to wait about half a second, uh, it's 11 frames specifically, um, for the red explosion particles to go away. Because the red explosion particles are a bomb active, and you need to have just the smoke oil. Um So the easiest way to do that is to throw a bomb, wait for it to blow up, and then um, walk back into the zone. However, um, that's not the fastest way, that's just the easiest way. So the, e the fastest way would be to actually do a Hess off this bomb. Um, so just walk a little bit away from the loading plane, and then we're going to do a Hess. And then, well that was more of an ESS, but yeah, you get the idea. Anyway, um, so that allocated just smoke. You saw the smoke in the air, but no red explosion. So we're going to break this grass, grab the drop, break this grass. We're going to break three rocks. It's going to be this one, skip one, and then it's the next two. Great. Okay, now let's go back to the grave room. And then the last thing we need to do is we need to allocate bomb and smoke. So the easiest way to do this is throw a bomb, wait for it to blow up, and then drop another bomb. Uh, whoops, I didn't demonstrate that very well. So that would be throw a bomb. Wow, I didn't know you could throw it over the fence like that. Uh, drop a bomb, and then you would go into it. Um, however, we don't actually want to do that because it's a bit slow. So the faster method is to do a Hess again, but you want to do it much closer to the loading plane. So that way, um, uh, this, the red explosion particles are full So we're just going to go like way up into this tunnel. Um, you don't want the fire ring to show up, that means the room has loaded, so this is probably a good spot, but just a little bit short of halfway up. And then we're going to do a this. Oops, that was a fess. Um, I rolled too early. So anyway, uh, go back up. That should be pretty good. You'll get a better feel for those as we do rooms. That should be good. Now we can come over here. And yeah, that, that came in if works correctly because this grass, the held actor pointer of it, is 41B7F0, which is what it should be. Um, so now that we know what the held actor pointer of the grass is, let's go ahead and figure out what the entrance index for writing is going to be. So we're going to put in the address of the held actor. So 401B. 7, F, 0. Um, and now we're writing to the entrance index of the grotto overlay for the generic grotto with offset 0x26, which is an x position, but it's the lower half of x. So if you ever forget, um, you can go to ZSR, x is 0x24, but we only care about the low half, so that would be 0x26. So to do that, we're just going to count up to six in this column. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then we're going to count up two in this column. One, two. We went from F to zero, which is a carry. So we need to add one here. And now we should be good to go. So our entrance index currently of the grass is six, one, seven, four. That's just because this grass is at that position before we super slide off it. Um, so yeah, we're going to get inverted cam and super slide off this grass. I can get a straight angle inverted cam on N64, which is a bit tricky. Um, there we go. Um, so I like to drop bomb in this dark patch of grass right here. It's like very circular and dark, and you can just stand in the in the middle of that, drop bomb. That'll be a good spot for it. Um, let go of target once you do the super slide. And now the entrance index is varying wildly with its breathing, which is exactly what we want. So go ahead, carry this back to the plane. And um, 
now at this point, if you're on Wii, you're going to go do the Wii exposition setup, um, which requires perfect cardinals. But we don't have perfect cardinals on N64, so we're going to do a different setup. Um, the downside to this setup um, is that it does, it's not possible to our knowledge in Graveyard to go to Majora um, without perfect cardinals. Like every, we pretty much tested every setup um, for this possible in Graveyard based on the two corners we have available. And like everything requires cardinals in some way. Um, so instead we're just gonna warp directly to the moon, which is the next closest place. So anyway, we're gonna target this wall uh, for angle 656B. And then we're going to ESS around a bit until we get to... Okay, this is the frame before the frame we want. Um, and my visual cue for this is if you look at Link's arm that's behind his head, uh, we can still see his wrist on this frame, so this is not the frame we want. So let's go one more. This frame, his wrist is completely blocked by his head, but we can still see his arm. And then if we go one too far, Oh, that was too, too far. So this is one too far. We can't really see his arm at all anymore. So this is the one we want, angle 5913. Um, so we're just going to go ahead and target it. And then come over to this corner with Captain Kita. Um, this is one of two consistent corners in the graveyard. Um, the other one being um, way back here. So all of our exposition setups, both on N64 and Wii, are going to start in either this corner or this one by Captain Kita. Um, for this, we want the Captain Kita corner. Um, so if you walk into this uh, Captain Kita here, and then you stop, your exposition is going to be C316 DD65. Uh, we only care about the DD65 part, because we're talking about lower half of X. Um, but yeah, no matter what you do, I mean, as long as you don't like walk backwards. But as long as you're walking like vaguely into this corner, you're always gonna snap to DB65. Like I can walk like directly into the wall, DB65. I can I can like sidewalk into Captain Pita, DB65. I can just like, tap. And I'm gonna have to hold that long. Just a small tap and Captain Pita's collision will push you to DB65. So once you have DB65, you're just gonna press A to drop. And then come over, bomb open this grotto. And you're on the moon. Um, so you can go ahead, go talk to Majora Kid. I can't super slide, so that's a rip, but that's not what this tutorial is about. <laughs> okay. So we're gonna go talk to the Majora Kid, and uh, we can just go to the moon. Or go to Majora's Lair, I mean. We're already on the moon. Um, so yeah, that's that was the tutorial. Uh, hopefully everybody found that helpful. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to let me know. Um, and yeah, you pretty much just fight Majora with sticks and shoes at this point. I'm not going to cover that in this tutorial because z already has really good tutorials on the Majora fight. Um, but yeah, anyway, thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you all later. Bye-bye!